The market is moving in a downward trend, and today we're going to take a look at some tokens. Maybe there are some options out there for you guys, and also what is causing all of this action in the marketplace. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. A couple of things that we'll hit in today. We'll get some Bitcoin, ETH. We'll take a look at Render. Handful of tokens that you guys will definitely want to look at. Maybe there's some options here of buying this dip. And or is this a safer one to set out? We'll dive into all that good stuff for you guys. Before we get started, uh, this of course is gonna be our sponsor video for Luxalgo and we work with them around doing everything uh, which really is built to enhance your trading experience. And we use the charts here and all their uh, premium indicators here of course on our show. And uh, you guys should check it out. Make sure and click the link down below. You guys can use our code, it does help the channel and we'll get into it. Let's start off here with Kobe EC uh, letter. A couple of points here I wanna hit on right now. Top 10% of stocks, many of you guys probably are aware of this, but top 10% of stocks now in the US reflect 75% of the entire market. Uh, this is by far the most concentrated stock market since the Great Depression of 1931. That's not a good sign. And then also in the dot-com bubble of 2001, concentration of the top 10 uh, peaked at around 72. So this is uh, another uh, scenario that would be interesting to watch. Uh, even prior to that, 2008 uh, financial crisis, the last time we saw 10% was still only around 66%. So this is a significant milestone of really the market centering around a very few uh, number of stocks. Obviously, NVIDIA is the one that you have to watch for today. Earnings will be coming after hours today. So be on the lookout after five today or after four. Uh, we'll probably start to see the NVIDIA earnings drop. And if they miss, could be a very interesting situation happening uh, in the S&P. If they hit, I'm not even sure that if they hit with even a good number, I think they're gonna have to blow it out of the water to really have a good uh, potential move here on the market. All right, so let's go into Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, price is dropping slightly uh, down to a one week low as traders focus on Bitcoin whales and of course what's happening with NVIDIA. So I wanna, of course, invite in Luxalgo's team uh, to really break down the charts today. So let's get in, Jacob. How's it going, man? Good, Paul. How you been? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, well, you know, markets are up, then they're down. Markets, that's what we call trading. And uh, yes, that's why we exactly. need the tools uh, <laughs> that you guys, of course, offer. Let's get into Bitcoin first and take a look at, one, is there a potential correction in action right now, or is this potentially just a little bit of a sideways move for Bitcoin? What are your charts showing? Yeah, I mean, this is this is great. This is healthy, right? I we like this is what we like to see in pattern movements, right? We want to see price push, break out, you know, find a spot which would it wants to settle, retrace, do the exact same process over again. We don't really like this crazy sideways action. We want clean movement, which is kind of what we're seeing on Bitcoin right now. So this is daily chart. On Bitcoin, we've discussed that 52K level before and why we think it was going to have resistance. So you can go back and watch any of the previous ones we've done. Uh, but we've shown that resistance at 52K from what we marked off in weekly charts. But overall, I mean, price extremely extended on the oscillator. Uh, we were in that overflow for a bit, but yet again, holding off. We had the uh, PDF drop for the FOMC minutes today, which might you know drive this price a bit lower too. But Right. Little little bit of interest peak on you know possible rate cuts in June, which is awesome to see. So that could drive, especially going into the uh, halving as well coming up. Um, but where we're at, fifty one, you know, K today, uh, we're down, you know, two percent. I mean, come on, it's two percent. We just had a massive, massive rally. What twenty to forty percent? And honestly, I could just mark it off here and see. I mean, from the last retracement, there you go, 20% move. I mean, I don't think 2% is going to make us too nervous. I would hope not, at least. <laughs> but uh, daily here extended, a healthy retracement could definitely happen. And if that were to occur, I'm not too crazy on this breaking below 50K. I think 50K could be a very healthy retracement um, on this current price. You can see even on a four-hour time frame, like it's already trying to fully extend to the downside. And that's right. what you really want to see in price action. It's like if if these lower time frames, and even a four hour is not that low of a time frame. If, if it's showing consolidation and it actually resets a bit, it could actually be just minor before it makes that next move. So I think Bitcoin right now, it's okay. I'm watching 50K over here. So we'll see if it breaks below 50K, then we can consider something else. But for now, I wouldn't be too stressed out about it. 
All right, so 50K might be the buy if you guys are maybe just getting into Bitcoin for the first time and you wanted a window. This might be a little window that uh, you could start some dollar cost averaging. When you look at um, other narratives out there, Jacob, obviously the Ethereum narrative has been one that we've talked about here. Once the ETF got rolling, obviously we've seen all sorts of upside from the ETF uh, play into this as well. But now, 2024, a lot of people are saying, hey, ETH is now here. We saw its first run to 3,000 in a very long time. So some pretty big moves happening with Ethereum. The question I have for you, is this the breakout point for ETH to see maybe a run at its all-time high? What are your thoughts? Yep, I mean... Yet again, like 3K, man, that was the biggest, biggest price target we were looking for at the beginning of this year. And we nailed it this week. And as you can see, people saw 3K. They're like, hey, you know, this thing's great. Maybe I take some off the table here. If, you know, obviously, if you're in probably below that 2000 mark for our mm -hmm. shorter term traders, long term, this is just one, you know, stone in, in the path to 4k plus maybe back to all-time highs but the biggest consideration with this was overall the uh you know volume profile from back in you know 21 2021 and breaking out of that we really were seeing you know a lot less trading happening up here there's a lot more movements occurring above you know this little range we've been in for a while below 2500 why we targeted 2500 before but if that broke 3K was, you know, that psychological level we were watching. I honestly think, you know, we've had this continuation week after week. What a, a good rule of thumb for people that are new too is if you want like these price move continuations, watch that weekly time frame. See if the previous week continues to close over um, each other's highs in this case. So like this high here, mm -hmm. you can see the week before. Um, I don't have my things up one second. Here you go. You can see the week before that its high was at, you know, 25.39. And then last week we closed over that 25.39. If this week right. we closed over last week's high of 28.95, then we can just consider that continuation occurring. Price still wants to rally higher. So that's just a small little tip that can help people to continue to hold positions if they're a little nervous. But overall, I mean, we, we're we targeting 3,300s right now. It's the bottom of a previous swing uh, order block there. So I mean, I'm, I'm very bullish if, if it wants to continue to close over these weekly highs. So very much like the delay that Ethereum's had, and it's finally trying to catch up with Bitcoin. So we'll see. <laughs> Well, and I think with ETH, you know, this retracement back down here to 2928 uh, has kind of been a window for some to look at this in terms of mm -hmm. a run to the 33 that you're talking about. Still, that would be a significant increase if we did see a $3,300 window. Remember, we have the happening coming up here, mm -hmm. most likely early May, and there's still speculation as to whether or not we could get the ETH. We'll know, I think, as we get more close to, say, the 30 days out, that's when kind of those SEC meetings start ramping up that kind of gave us yes. an indicator with, obviously, uh, the Bitcoin ETF. So definitely one to watch. And I think uh, Ethereum is, has been one of those that uh, we just like and we kind of hold the position uh, love. long term. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think love's a better I think love's a better word for that. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's get into Uniswap because they've got a lot of news here. Uh, you're going to, using the word love, uh, you'll you'll also love V2. Uh, so now uh, it's bringing it everywhere. You got Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, Base, March, and of course, Binance and even Avalanche now available over on Uniswap. Lots happening there. Saw a nice run with, uh, well, we saw a nice run with Avalanche and Solana over the past several weeks, but now Uniswap here running a little bit. What are your thoughts on Uniswap right now as a token? Yeah, so um, first, you know, like always, I like to look at big picture. So, you know, seeing Uniswap actually break out of this value range on a weekly chart, very good. Um, this is just a, you know, this is a range coming from back in February of 22, right? So pretty much two years ago, right? It's a lot of price happening in two years. So I, you know, when I see price, this being in a range for two years, I think it's very significant range, right? It's a long, you know, period of time. Um, but it breaking out of that, which was, you know, roughly that set, you know, seven dollars and twenty cents. Great first start to this actually getting back to some value that we've seen when it first had its major run. So starting here, that's what I first would want to see is um see if we can continue to hold over these breakouts. Like right now, seven dollars twenty cents would be great 
we can hold over that here on our weekly chart. What I really do like is the uh, oscillator on this. We did have a money flow change. So that's this little cloud in the middle. It right. flipped to bullish money flow, which is good. It means buyers are stepping in. And it had that healthy extension on that first initial push for us to actually maybe flip into a trend formation. So it's looking really actually good for potential continuation of this trend. Obviously, we had a high here of you know $8.25. I think as long as $7.20 holds, you're probably going to go retest that $8 high and see maybe double digits at some point. Uh, but, you know, this is where that news needs to continue to come into, you know, the flow of things. But overall, not bad. You can see healthy retracement on a four hour there mm -hmm. with the uh, the overall comeback. The daily is quite interesting because of the, um, you know, it retesting that same high. But again, you know, if if trends want to form, they need to continue to hold up over previous highs and it still has that opportunity in that you know seven dollar range there so it's not anything i would be considering a selling opportunity just yet because it could be continuing that trend on on yeah. a weekly sort of time frame so yeah I'm, um, you know we see a lot of uh, a lot of people you know in our comments you know talking about uniswap obviously it's a you know it's one of the more popular DeFi platforms out there so i think also the not only the fact they've gone cross chain to a certain extent, but also the expansion the expansion of so many projects that you can get access to. So that's another benefit for the DeFi king. Um, let's go into Solana. Solana, of course, continuing to drain right now, three billion uh, in a day. Uh, so pretty yep. significant jump down on Solana. Many people would say this is a healthy retracement for a, a token that has been a little bit overheated. When you look at Solana right now, there was one point they kind of point at 6% in the last 24. You can kind of see the chart right there. Uh, but it is still clinging to about a 16, uh, almost 17% accumulated gain over the previous month. So not bad at still holding above 100 bucks. What's your outlook for Solana right now? Yeah, so Lana is probably the first big structure move we had, and we actually just released uh, our screeners yesterday. So these, this is addition to the premium plan and ultimate plan. I mean, you do on the uh, essential plan we offer get just the price action concepts ones, but this can help me look across all of the features we offer without having okay. them directly on my chart. So like Solana, here's the third one down I have here. I can see within the, um, you know, signals and overlays, which is the one that you see these prints, the overall rating on it is still roughly bullish. We just flipped to a sell on uh, the signal side, but bullish stance still. And I, I mean, I do consider this still in a bullish state and I'll explain in just a minute. But uh, if we look at, you know, our other things as well, it's neutral in on price action, which, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, if everything's not lining up here, I can consider it and I can see the oscillators in a strong bearish rating as well. So it's very conflicting, right? Nothing's all lining up on all three indicators. So seeing that I could consider this, you know, a level to, con you know, to really watch right now. And I mean, I would, you know, 100% agree that it's all over the board because we are retesting a crucial point for that last run we had. So Right now, hundred dollars. Yet again, psychological. I think there's a lot of psychology and you know these uh, any type of assets that are being traded. So that hundred dollar mark definitely something to keep a close eye on. This had a low of one hundred and fifteen uh, hundred dollars fifteen cents. So there you go. Mm -hmm. You can see why people might have bought off of that level. Um, but again, it's retesting a pretty core level there. Um, with it being a high as well. So after it broke out of that, um, that $100 price is the big, you know, the big ticket to continue to watch. Solana coming off a of weekly is still way off from its highs, but right. it is also retesting a pretty large order block that formed back when it had really aggressive volume in March of 2022. So, you know, if I'm considering whether this is a sell, in my opinion, I honestly would still be holding it. And, and I, I mean, for me, I buy this, like throughout the year. So I'm not somebody that's like trading it like uh, in lower time frames, but right. uh, I just invest in it. Um, so like an investment here, I mean, we have a, you know, a nice range. So like if you're looking to pick up more, um, I would probably want to watch it come down maybe in the low nineties before actually picking up more. Um, if you're somebody that wants to purchase this at some point, but yeah, not bad where it's at for potentially continuing, but you know, we watch a hundred dollar level very closely. Yeah. And the last order block right there hovering at right around 97 down range mm -hmm. of about 94. Yes. So yeah. So it might be a good entry point for those of you looking at Seoul. 
uh, going forward. All right, so we've got Solana. Of course, Avalanche is also in that bucket. A little bit of a slip, maybe a little bit more aggressive, trading at around $36 uh, on the token right now. When you look at Avalanche, and we've had a chance to have their team on, they've got a lot of innovation happening. The narrative is starting to heat up. But you look at the token itself, it had that real fast ascent, and then it's been a little bit choppy and sideways here recently. What are your thoughts with AVAX? Yeah, and it's honestly very similar to Solana, right? So um, you, you can take similar um, you know, trading um, tactics to this. Now, the price is obviously way different, but um, it being said, it's coming inside what you know this imbalance here, and buyers haven't really stepped in on it. So I'm not, I'm gonna consider that's pretty much gotten taken out now. Mm -hmm. We usually wait for that in uh, bearish close below it, but I'm talking about this little uh, square you see there, right? But right. you know, the uh, bullish change character still in play. Um, oscillator though has just broken. And this is probably my favorite indicator we have is this oscillator. It's what I use the most when I take trades. Um, it it kind of it can indicate early moves, right? So this thing didn't continue a bullish structure based on this previous bullish turning point. You can see here it broke below that um, just recently. So. Right now for Avalanche, um, yeah, I think lower prices could be ahead. Um, you know, with the overall market kind of resetting a bit, it's it's not bad. I'm not going to say it's going to just drop down to low 20s, but I do see it maybe even coming into the mid 30s, maybe lower than that. But um, for me, I would want to see something like that if it were to head lower, maybe get a nice bounce, like you said, off the order block mm -hmm. we saw on Solana as well. Um, down here in the uh, probably 34 range, somewhere below that, 35. Um, and then maybe a retracement back to 38. But, you know, for now, it's it's definitely waiting to confirm that it actually wants to go lower. So I would yeah. I would just kind of be patient because it, it will eventually, you know, trade where you want it to trade. So you just got to be patient. One to watch for sure. I want to get into a handful of other tokens. And uh, mm -hmm. before we let you go today, I definitely want to get maybe a couple of picks from you that you're watching, you know, uh, in terms okay. of active tokens. But Pixel, of course, uh, this token, of course, sky uh, skyrocketed to all time high. Uh, a little bit of a surge here with uh, several things. And I think some of it has been, you know, just on narrative, which we start to see really uh, kind of play into, especially these ETH ecosystems. But narratives like this, gaming, projects, NFTs, et cetera, that are starting to really make their way through, because now we'll see altcoins play into this, uh, maybe in this next cycle as Bitcoin and ETH continue their trend up. What do you like about Pixel right now if you were trading this token? Yeah, so, <laughs> the, the, so this is where we talk about, you know, data is everything to me and honestly to any indicator, really. So... Um, on this, in my opinion, not too much data forming. You can already see, you know, there's a little bit, obviously, because it's so new. Uh, so we're not even getting any readings off the oscillator yet because the price action is so fresh. But if I dive in, you know, let's say to a one hour here, I can start seeing a little bit. Um, we're back at, you know, let's just say Binance lows where it kind of uh, ICO'd or opened. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a good spot in which, you know, if you were somebody that, does, like needs a good value to buy. This is not bad. Uh, but again, this is where you do your research, understand what Pixel does, who they are, and then make your decision based on that because it's so new. The data is, there's not enough data there to fully price in probably what it's actually valued at. Um, but, you know, if you're trading this, what I personally would want to see is like some volume come in, break 54 cents and then trade it from there. I want to see that actually move out of this bear structure that it's in. Uh, but that's kind of what I would watch. But 50 cents right now seems to want to hold pretty easily. So if you're investing it, do your research, then say, okay, you know, 50 cents is actually not bad because it's, you know, that's where it opened and it got bought from there and it's kind of settling off here as well. So we'll see kind of in the future when the data comes out a little bit more. <laughs> What about you, uh, Jacob, as far as tokens you're kind of honing in on right now, especially with these markets, everything yeah. pretty much in the red. Is there anything that you're liking on a buy the dip scenario? Yeah, I'm, the biggest thing I'm watching right now, honestly, is Link. Uh, Link finally had that big breakout of this consolidation. It had it's showing good um, price um, as it's moved through there. Um, and you know, we're getting a healthy retracement on this. The oscillators finally come back down to about 50%. 
So I'm really watching this off 18 right now. I'm going to wait till obviously I see that people are buying it. If I go to that oh, chart, if I go to the weekly, um, it's quite interesting because we've right. bought back into this old massive imbalance up here in 22. Uh, but, you know, we've just set a higher low on the oscillator. And this is one of my favorite things to see is when it forms proper structure above previous turning points on the oscillator. So those are those dots. Those are called turning points. Mm -hmm. So seeing that turn there and we get this breakout, we're getting a healthier retracement now. I want to see if we can get another bullish week in play, and then I'm going to be trading this up to about 26, 27. So okay. this is probably right. the one I'm looking at the most um, is Link, and I love Chainlink and the, the volume it's had recently. So definitely a high watch on my list um, is Link for sure. We get into swing trades here uh, quite a bit. So what would be your go-to? I mean, so like like Rune is a short that I've been in since the um, since this initial break, and I can kind of show you here. Mm -hmm. um, we and this is an oscillator setup I watch all the time. I'm I'm targeting right now um, four dollars and eighty five cents to the downside. But I guess yeah, this is a great example of you know how I would go about a short. Now I when I short, I don't normally long term short because I you know crypto for me is extremely bullish. Like I yeah. I'm bullish big time on crypto. Um, but when I see a short opportunity, I'm not going to hesitate to take it when I have the opportunity. So that like where I circled there is pretty much where we're in at. But stewed to our oscillator, like I just said on Link, it's just the opposite. We had you know a low. That was a recent break. It came down, set a lower high, and then gave us that turning point on the bearish side. Yeah. Um, and it was after a uh, change character structure break. So that being said, I waited an extra day. It's continuing bearish trend. We're in roughly like right here and targeting now what I, you know, I target previous highs. So okay. or like yeah. if that's in play. So I'm targeting these lows and then I might look for a bullish setup. But uh, we are definitely have extended nicely and we're in some pretty decent profit right now. So this Rune, is going to be a good overall, trade for you, man. Oh, yeah. It's already <laughs> playing out real nice. But honestly, yeah. if it retraces, shows me support here, I'm going to I'll probably flip it. But it's yeah. definitely that that pullback has been very nice playing out so far. So hopefully yeah, it continues cool. to that downside. Jacob, always fun having you in, breaking down some of the tokens. So uh, thanks again for all of you guys listening and watching. Make sure and check out Lux Algo. But thanks again for stopping in. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Paul. Appreciate it. You bet. All right, you guys uh, jumping in on the Diamond Circle. If you're not in that right now, it's one of the best places where you get additional content from us. More deep dive research. We do our market sentiment anal analytics over there. All that you can reach which is just by clicking the link down below. And of course, if you want to catch me out there on X, it's at Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.